Hello and welcome to Gadget Joe and today we're taking a look at something big and bold but also very quiet. So in today's video we're taking a look at the Dark Rock Elite. Now this is Be Quiet's strongest air cooler and it is an absolute monster of a cooler. It is huge and you'll really get an idea of just how big it is when I take it out of the box in a moment. Now this video is going to start off with an unboxing and overview of the basic specifications of the Dark Rock Elite but then the second half of this video we'll be putting it to the test and running some benchmarks on it to really get an idea of just how well this unit performs. Now the box would suggest it's quite a large cooler because normally when you get an air cooler for your system it comes in quite a small compact package. If you've got a standard stock cooler, for example, an AMD Wraith or Prism, or you've got the Intel stock air cooler, you're gonna know that the coolers are quite nice and compact. Now, these are complete opposites. These are huge, beefy air coolers, and they feature some really high performance straight out of a box because they have some extra features on them, but really help draw extra power and really help push your system to its full potential. Now, these sort of coolers are there to basically compete with the likes of AIOs. And these do exactly the same without having to worry about having any water anywhere. So the box itself is pretty much be quiet as standard with a nice black box, images all around, and obviously you've got some performance charts indicating the performance and measurements of the unit on the back. You have some images with some more details. And then on the side, you have a QR code so that you can scan and get some access to the website to get a bit more information about the cooler. On the front, you've got an image of the cooler and you can really start to get an idea of just how big this unit is. So let's get it open and we'll take a look at exactly what you get. Opening it is pretty simple. As you can see, it's just the cooler inside with some foam packaging. And then you get a box as well that features all of your fittings that you're going to need to get everything mounted to your system. You get the user manual and you get a warranty card included in that. And then you get a bag with all the fittings that you need for mounting your cooler to AMD or Intel. Now the socket support for this cooler is quite extensive. When it comes to Intel, you have support for 1150, 1151, 1155, 1200 and LGA 1700, so the latest sockets. And then it comes to AMD, it's pretty simple. You've just got AM4 and AM5 supports, which is pretty much the same socket when it comes to cooling. You then also get a little tube of thermal paste and with a cooler like this, you could probably really invest in a slightly higher performance thermal paste option. Something that Be Quiet do promote is the fact that this cooler is compatible with liquid metal thermal grease. Now liquid metal thermal grease offers higher conductivity when it comes to heat transfer and it just really does push that extra little bit of performance out of your cooler in terms of heat transfer. Now we're going to take it out of the box and this is where you're going to take an idea of just how big this unit actually is. Take this foam off. You do get a Be Quiet screwdriver. I have quite an extensive collection of these now, but they're always welcome because they're just fantastic. The fact that it includes it straight out of a box is and always has been a welcome experience. So I'm just going to take this out of this foam cutout and there you go. This entire box, this entire large, now I'm quite a large man, and I've got big hands, and if you look at next to my hand, it's almost the full size of my hand all the way around. So it's not just a tall, low profile one, it is just a huge, beefy unit. The design of the unit is relatively simple, it is just a big cube. You've got two large arrays of heat spreaders, aluminium heat spreaders to dissipate the heat from the processor straight through those seven included heat pipes. Now at the bottom, you can see all seven of those pipes. Usually a cooler will have two, maybe three or four at a push heat pipes. This one has seven high quality heat pipes straight from that nickel plated CPU block. As you can see, there is already mounting straight on the block for mounting it to your sockets on here because mounting this cooler to your system is super simple. All you need to do is remove this fan in here, which, and then you have access down the side here for that long screwdriver to secure it to your cooler. 
And then, as you can see, it's quite a modular design. They do have a fan that's already pre-built on the front, which is nice and sleek. It is a Be Quiet Silent Wings 135mm fan. The fact that it's a Silent Wings fan suggests that it operates nice and silent. And it does indeed do that. The Be Quiet fans are fans that I've been using for many years, and they always run super quiet. What's more is this has a feature built straight into the cooler, so you can obviously control it via PWM, which when you connect it to your motherboard, means that you can control all your cooling facilities straight off software on your computer. But you don't have to do that because the cooler itself has a switch on the bottom that says Q and P. Q stands for quiet, which means that the fans will remain off when not needed, and then will only power up to 1500 RPM, which means that it will stay nice and quiet. If you press P, that will then put it into performance mode. That will allow the fans to then spin up to 2000 RPM so that it can really push the potential of this cooler. Now, as you can see, I've taken everything apart. That's because this 135 millimeter fan here sits nicely on an inbuilt unit that then features a panel at the end with some mesh grills and an ARGB LED panel at the end. You do have that brushed steel effect with a Be Quiet logo in the middle. And then you have this nice ring that you can control via software on your computer or directly through a case if you have it going through a controller fan hub. The fact that you can remove this fan super easily does mean that you don't have to then faff about with those annoying little clips, then metal clips that you have to use on some coolers to really mount it into place and then get it all lined up. Everything just sits in nicely and it just fits perfectly. So once you've got that installed in the middle, the whole unit sits nice and compact. It just clicks into place and then you have a final shroud which does hold into place by magnets and it just really tidies up the overall aesthetic because as you can see currently, you do have quite an industrial look and it just looks like something's missing. So all you need to do is simply slot this on and that finishes off the look perfectly. Overall, the cooler is a real showpiece in your system. It's going to have some substantial weight on your motherboard, so you need to really make sure that you've got it installed properly and nice and tight. Obviously don't tighten too much because you can damage your socket on your motherboard, but once it's in and secured into place, it should support it really nicely. Obviously on a flatter system, if you've got a system with a motherboard that is horizontally mounted rather than vertically mounted, then obviously that's going to benefit more. But all that size is perfect for dissipating all that heat. You've got those large 135 millimeter fans that can perform up to 2000 RPM to really give it that high level of performance. Now this unit is rated at 280 watts of thermal design power draw. Now what that means, it doesn't mean that it's going to use 280 watts of power from your power supply at all times. It just means that when this is kicking in to full gear and you're, you've got a hot processor. What I mean by that is if you've got a processor that is known for running hot, now all processors run hot, obviously, but some of them require more power and really do dissipate a lot of heat from them. And this will help in cooling that, which means that you've got a lot of leg room for cooling, even the most demanding processors on the market. If you want a model like this that looks very similar, but you're not interested in the RGB, they do make a version called the Dark Rock Pro 5, which is pretty much the same thing, except this has one 135mm fan and one 120mm fan. So it's slightly smaller in terms of fans on there, but it's pretty much the same sort of design, but you don't have RGB on this one. This one has a lower thermal design power draw. But if you want to take a look at this one, I am going to be doing a review of this one next week. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss this as well. So going back to this, what I'm going to do now is get it installed in a system and then I will put it under some tests and I will come back to you shortly with the results and findings from that. So I'll see you in a moment. What we're going to do now is do some testing. And now before you start to look at this and think, hang on a minute, it was a completely different setup. That's because I've recorded this part a little bit later on and we are in the middle of getting the backdrop all changed. So there has been a little bit of a change during the video. But anyway, I'm digressing. Let's get back to the testing of the cooler. 
When it comes to testing the Dark Rock Elite, we put it to the test amongst a few other coolers, including the Dark Rock Pro 5, the low profile Johnsbow HX4170D, an Intel stock cooler, and also the Be Quiet Pure Loop 2 FX AIO 240mm version, and an EK Nucleus CR360 AIO. To begin with, we tested all coolers under a 3D Mark CPU profile benchmark, which puts the CPU under stress to find out its performance scores across 16, 8, 4, 2, and single core benchmarks. This then causes the CPU to utilize all cores and really push it to the limit, which in turn transfers to heat from the CPU. The Elite 5 kept it very cool at a 49.1 degree average. The Dark Rock Pro 5 fell just one degree warmer, whilst the Intel stock cooler vastly trailed behind. The closest was the CR360 with just 0.1 difference. The temps did reach a high peak of around 80 degrees during testing, but that was only momentarily under the highest stress point, so I have recorded the average temperatures of each for the sake of testing. I then ran a couple of CPU intensive games in the form of Fortnite and Cyberpunk 2077. I first ran Fortnite in 1080p at ultra high quality settings for 30 minutes and the Elite 5 once again did a phenomenal job and kept the CPU nice and low at 56.2. The Dark Rock Pro 5 falling short by 0.1. The Intel stock cooler once again was pretty awful, with the best score being hit here by the CR360. Running Fortnite once again at 1440p at ultra high for 30 minutes, and the temperature started to pick up a little bit by 3 degrees on the Elite 5, and the gap was tightened even more on the CR360. Finally, we ran Fortnite at 4K quality at ultra high for 30 minutes, and naturally the temps rose once more. But as expected, the scores stayed pretty consistent throughout, with the Elite 5 and Dark Rock Pro 5 both hitting an equally impressive 63.1 degrees. Cyberpunk proved a little bit more challenging for the coolers over Fortnite, naturally so with all the additional rendering and shaders needed. We tested it for one hour at 1440p at ultra settings and it hit 68 degrees for the Elite 5, and a shockingly low 82 for the Intel stock cooler. Those that have played the game know that it does get the CPU pretty toasty, so a consistent 68 degree temperature after an hour's gameplay is a very commendable result. Finally, I set to render a 4K 30 minute video using DaVinci Resolve. Video rendering is primarily CPU intensive. Newer systems and graphics cards can help with the final stages of rendering, but predominantly, it is a CPU intensive task. The Elite 5 kept it at a cool 51 degrees, outperforming all of the other coolers except for CR360, which pipped it to the post by just one degree. And that pretty much wraps up the installation and the review of the Dark Rock Elite by Be Quiet. Now, some could argue that pitting an air cooler against an AIO is quite a risky choice because an AIO is generally expected to do much better than an air cooler, but this is a large, high performance, high TDP unit that is designed to compete with AIOs, even 360 AIOs, as we saw in the test. Now, the EK CR360 is probably arguably one of the best 360mm AIOs on the market currently. So, naturally, it was going to be a tough fight for the scores at the end, and that pretty much proved it. But what we did find is that the Dark Rock Elite and the Dark Rock Pro 5, which I've got behind me, which you're going to see in a future video very shortly, both held up very, very strongly against a 360 AIO. When it comes to a 240 AIO, they both absolutely blitzed that. And this is definitely something that's very interesting to see because a lot of people will argue that an air cooler just simply won't perform as well as liquid cooling. And that's not the case. Be Quiet and a few other companies, obviously, but Be Quiet have been producing some coolers, some massive, huge, high performance air coolers for many years now and I've reviewed plenty of them over the time and they've always held up there with some of the best cooling offer options on the market. During testing of everything, the maximum TDP I pulled from the CPU through this is 190 watts and it kept everything nice and cool. Now remember the fact that it is quite a hot chip so it is slightly high. Your overall results will vary depending on the CPU that you're using but be assured that this will certainly keep it very cool. Now obviously this is a 280 watt TDP unit so there's still plenty of legroom left for any more 
performance if it's needed. That little RGB strip on the end is a really nice addition as well. It does look absolutely fantastic, as you can see in the system, but I've got it in currently. I've got it synced with the software so that the Be Quiet case that it's in has the same colouring around it as well. Obviously, you can change it to whatever colour you want, or alternatively, you can just turn it right off. Now, Be Quiet and particularly known for their RGB, and what I do find is when they do do their RGB, they do it quite tastefully. It's not in your face, it's just nice and subtle and really does carry along with the clean aesthetic of their products. And this is no different. It is, as I've mentioned multiple times, a very large cooler. So you're going to have to take into consideration that when purchasing it. Now the advantage of an air cooler over an AIO would be the fact that it's super simple to maintain. Cleaning it is just as simple as blowing the dust away from the fins and obviously making sure that those fans are free of dust. When it comes to maintaining an AIO, it's a little bit more complicated in the sense that if you start to notice a dip in your performance, you could obviously change your thermal pace, but generally speaking, that would mean that the coolant is starting to cause an issue and then you're going to have to look at replacing it. And on most AIOs, you can change the coolant on them. And if you do, you're voiding the warranty. So an air cooler is a much simpler option to work with. Overall, I'm mega impressed with the Dark Rock Elite and obviously the Dark Rock Pro 5, which, as I mentioned earlier, you'll see in another video coming soon. It really hung in there performance-wise with some of the top coolers on the market. When you compare it to the Intel stock cooler, it's just a completely different ball game altogether. You've got a huge amount of surface area for that heat to dissipate through on a cooler like this. And then you've got those two 135mm fans also aiding in keeping everything nice and cool. Now, for those wondering why the Dark Rock 5 and the Dark Rock Elite had slightly different results, that's just because of the fact that the Dark Rock Elite does feature two 135mm fans and the Dark Rock Pro 5 features one 135mm fan and one 120mm fans. So there's an ever so slightly different performance from both the coolers. But with that said, they both performed really, really respectfully well and definitely is something that I can easily recommend. Again, it's not going to be for everybody. It is a large cooler, even though it looks nice. It is big, bulky. But if you're after an air cooler and you don't really want to go into any form of water cooling, this is a bit of a no-brainer. If you've got a case that fits it, I would really strongly recommend going for the Dark Rock Elite or even the Dark Rock Pro 5. And that's it. This has been my review of the Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite air cooler. If you want to get one yourself, I will leave a link in the description as to where you can go and get one for yourself. But it's definitely worth a look at if you're looking for a new air cooler and a high performance air cooler, especially with the likes of a lot of modern systems. They really do draw a lot of power and then in turn, they do need a lot of cooling to keep everything nice and cool, as you saw when we compared it to other coolers in the testing. So I've been Gadget Joe. This has been the Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite air cooler. If you want one, there is a link in the description to go and get one for yourself. While you're down there, don't forget to click like and hit subscribe if you haven't already because the channel is growing and we have lots more content coming. And until next time, goodbye.